In the morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you're listening to St. Mark and Bemidji's podcast, a program that invites you to stop and take a second look at God's Word four times a week. This week, we wrap up our liturgy study. I'm glad you're here for today's study, and I hope you can join us for the conclusion tomorrow. Liturgy is a fancy word for the way we conduct ourselves in the divine service, but there's so much more to it than just fancy words. Every bit of traditional Lutheran liturgy is literally packed with ways that God wants to serve us. Yes, that's right. God serves us in the divine service. And how do we respond? With gratitude for what God has done for us is inconceivably merciful, good, and loving. As we're about to get rolling, I'd like to invite you to continue with us in our study today, and if you're interested, listen to past episodes on this same topic. I hope that you are enriched by our study today. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Take, drink. This is the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of your sins. May this strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Those prepared for Holy Communion now come and receive the Lord's body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. The very same Jesus who died and rose again is present, giving his body and blood for us. And because Jesus is really present there, we are strengthened and preserved unto life everlasting. Once again, the words of the distribution are an important confession of faith, for they confess that we are receiving the true body and blood of Jesus, and nothing less. The Lutheran service book has done well in this confession by emphasizing that the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus is received not only with one's soul, but also with one's body, by mouth, which is fitting because Jesus has not redeemed souls, but people, and people are body and soul. By baptism, according to St. Paul in 1 Corinthians, a believer's body has been made a temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus himself said the Trinity dwells with a believer in John 14. But there is a mystery here even more profound. Jesus says, In my Father's house there are many mansions, or many rooms. The word is, of course, speak of heaven. The word mansion, or room, means permanent dwelling place. The same word that Jesus uses when he says, And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Those who love Jesus will be the mansions for the indwelling of the Trinity. In the body and blood of the Savior received with the bread and the wine is the fulfillment of this promise of Jesus. More than heaven being a place we go, a kind of eternal vacation spot, Heaven is to be the unity of God with His people, literally. These words, or any words like them, will not be found in any of the general Protestant services because there is no such belief, and therefore no such words confessing so. How sad! The pastor may dismiss the communicants from the altar with the words, Depart in peace. These are the same words spoken by Jesus to two women to whom He ministered in the Gospels. The woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5, 34, and the sinful woman, Luke 7, verse 50. In each case, a key element in the text is that the women are absolved of their sin. But along with the absolving cleansing of the body and blood of Christ, the physical healing also occurs. Did you hear that? Wherever there is forgiveness of sins, there is both spiritual and physical healing. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. This is a declaration on the part of the pastor. Depart in peace, or the Savior's peace rest upon you. It's not just a nice wish or even a dismissal from the communion table like a, okay, now you can go, we're finished, but a certain declaration from Christ that the communicants are truly at peace with God, for God has come to them to sanctify and preserve them. The Nuke Dimittis The singing of a post-communion canticle is an ancient tradition. In the early church, the congregation would sing Psalm 145 and included these verses. The eyes of all look expectantly to you, 
and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Interesting that words we often use as a table prayer before a meal were understood as referring to the Holy Communion by those living closer to the earthly days of Jesus and the Apostles. The early church would also sing Psalm 34, including, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and save such as have a contrite spirit. Repentance? Faith? Taste? See? The true body and blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of sins, placed into the mouth of the penitent believer. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Luke 2, verse 25-35. One must not pass up the observation that this presence of Christ brings about a communion that surpasses that of the high priest in the most holy place of the temple in the Old Testament, the Holy of Holies. The priest was present in the temple with God. In the Lord's Supper, the temple Christ gives himself to eat and drink, placing himself not just with us, but in us. This connection is taught powerfully in our communion hymns. Listen closely to them the next time they are sung. The ancient Greek liturgy began the use of the Nuc Dimittis, the Lord now let your servant depart in peace. Nuc Dimittis is Latin for let us depart. This is the song of Simeon, the man whom God had promised would not see death until he saw the Christ, the consolation of Israel. Directed by the Holy Spirit, Simeon takes the infant, flesh and blood Jesus in his arms, and sings the new Demitis, acknowledging that he has seen the long-awaited Christ. The congregation makes the same confession of the Christ's presence to save. As did Simeon, we also hold in our hands, yea, place into our mouths, the body and blood of Jesus for our salvation. He is as present with us as he was for that faithful man in the temple courtyard long ago. Only that Simeon only held, Christ is truly in us. Interesting also that Simeon could proclaim that his life was fulfilled at beholding the promised Christ. In other words, he was now ready, prepared to die. With the receiving of the body and blood in Christ in the sacrament, the believer indwelt by the Trinity, for him to live is Christ and to die is gain. At the receiving of Christ's body and blood, I am confessing I am ready to die, safe in him. More next time, my friends. We hope that today's meditation on God's Word has enriched you. Divine services are held right here in Bemidji, Minnesota at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday school and adult Bible study is also offered between our Sunday services at 9.15 a.m. Our church services are live-streamed at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings and are available afterwards on our channel, St. Mark Lutheran Church Bemidji. If you're listening or watching this podcast, you are cordially invited to join us in person next week and every week. This is our fourth year producing this podcast, and there is a large archive of devotional material online available if you want to learn more about God and His Word. Visit www.stmarkbemidji.org or look in the show notes in this podcast for a link to this and many other meditations on God. You can also search for St. Mark Bemidji on YouTube to find our channel. If you have any questions, or you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website, which is once again www.stmarkbemidji.org. All scripture readings are taken from the Holy Bible, New International Version, copyright 2011, and are used by permission from Zondervan. Meditation's Daily Devotional is published by Northwestern Publishing House and is also used by permission. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider subscribing and telling a friend. May God bless the rest of your day. God's
saying, I am baptized into Christ. He, because I could not pay it, gave my full redemption price. Do I need of treasures many? I have one worth more than any. That brought me salvation free, lasting to eternity.